the features? The features of congestive cardiac failure. The features of, let us remove this, features, features of congestive cardiac failure. Now, what are the other points? The first point is prolongation of PR interval. At the same time, talking about the heart sound, there is decrease S1, the first heart sound. At the same time, there the third sound and the fourth sound, S3 and S4 may be present. And the third point, the patient may come with the features of congestive cardiac failure. And the next point is dropped beats or there is tachycardia there is tachycardia which is not proportionate to the fever which is not proportionate to the fever so tachycardia not proportionate to fever and persists during sleep you can note down this so let me revise there's a prolongation of the pr talking about the heart sound s1 decrease s3 s4 present features of congestive cardiac failure and the fourth point drop bits are present tachycardia that is not proportionate to the fever and the tachycardia it also persists during the sleep now what is the pathological appearance in myocardium in rheumatic fever now i want to define the next term that is the scop scop body what do you mean by scop body scop body means in the central in the central there is fibrinoid this is the fibrinoid degeneration there is a fibrinoid degeneration in the central which is surrounded by which is surrounded by lymphocytes basophilic giant cells Baso means basophilic giant cells, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and fibro. This is like fish, fibroblasts. So, for remembering, I am drawing it like a fish, fibroblast, plasma cells, lymphocytes, basophils. These basophils are basophil giant cells. And in the central, there is a fibrinoid degeneration, and this comprises the ASCOF body. Now, the third point is the myocardium, pericardium, and the last that is the third point is the endocardium. The endocardium. What happens in endocardium? The innermost layer of the heart. In endocardium, the first thing is there is a inflammation. That means there is an inflammatory process. And this inflammatory process, this inflammatory process of the endocardium is involving the valves of the heart. This inflammatory process is involving the valves of the heart. Now, let us see. So, in endocardium, there is an inflammatory process going on. At the same time, in valve, there is involvement of the mitral valves. Mitral valves are most commonly involved. Followed by mitral valve, the second valve. Remember, now here I give you the next mnemonic that is M A T, MAT, which means there is involvement of mitral valve, followed by the second is the aortic valve, and the third is the tricuspid valve. Remember, pulmonic valves are very rarely involved they are almost they, they are not involved in rheumatic fever but the most common involved valve is the mitral 
valve which is followed by aortic valve and the third is the tricuspid valve. So, what happens in the endocardium? In the endocardium initially there is a in the endocardium in the valves there is a inflammation and this inflammation during the process of healing there is a fibrosis as well as adhesions and scar formation leading to variable degree of stenosis and regurgitation. It will lead to variable degree of stenosis and regurgitation. It will lead to variable degree of stenosis and regurgitation. Now, just let us focus on the heart. I will just make your revision. So, in case of heart, when someone comes with the someone with the rheumatic fever comes. So, remember almost 60 percent of the patient in 60 percent of the patient with the rheumatic fever, there is involvement of the heart. In the heart, there is involvement of the three structures that is the pericardium, myocardium and endocardium. In pericardium, clinically they present with the central chest pain, central pericardial central chest pain. In pathologically, there is a bread and butter appearance. In case of myocardium, there is a prolongation of the PR interval. At the same time, S1 is decreased, S3 and S4 is present. There is a feature of congestive cardiac failure, drop bits are present and the tachycardia is present, which is not proportionate to the fever and it also persists during the sleep. Now, in endocardium, there is involvement of the mitral valve followed by the aortic valve and the tricuspid valve. So, this was about the involvement of the heart. Okay. Now, let us see what happens in the brain. So, what is the percentage? But before that, always remember, I want to add a term acute rheumatic fever, acute rheumatic fever which is recurrent, which is recurrent leads to, now there is a next term, rheumatic heart disease. Now remember, acute rheumatic fever in long term, when it is recurrent, it leads to rheumatic heart disease and rheumatic heart disease is the most common cause of childhood heart disease which is common in the developing countries. In the developing countries, rheumatic heart disease comprises, it is, it forms the most common cause of the childhood heart disease. In the world, world we have data that 20 millions, there are 20 million cases of rheumatic heart disease. Now, you can see the burden of rheumatic heart disease and it is most common in the developing countries. Now, as I mentioned earlier, almost all the complication, all the clinical features and the complication or the sequel of the rheumatic fever, it gets resolved except the cardiac manifestation, cardiac manifestation. So, the in endocardium, again I want to add, there is a variable degree of murmur. There are variable degree of murmur depending upon the involvement. So, there may be mitral valve involvement, aortic valve involvement and as per the involvement of the valve, there can be apical systolic murmur or there can be diastolic murmur that is the basal early diastolic murmur or sometimes there can be apical mid diastolic murmur. Now, talking about the murmur, I want to add one more point. So, in this point, endocardium, there is a murmur. Now, there is a apical systolic murmur in mitral regurgitation. In mitral regurgitation, there is a apical systolic murmur and there is a basal early diastolic murmur, basal early diastolic murmur in case of aortic 
regurgitation and at the same time there is apical there is apical mid diastolic murmur in case of and known as caricoms murmur and it is due to the nodules it is due to the nodules present in mitral valves leaflets it is due to the nodules present in mitral valves leaflet now let us see the third structure that is the brain in brain there is involvement the what is the percentage of involvement there is a 2 to 30 percent in, in 2 to 30 percent of the cases of rheumatic fever there is involvement of the brain and in brain it causes it causes Sindenham's chorea it causes Sindenham's chorea now what happens in Sindenham's chorea the involvement what is Sindenham's chorea it is the aimless it is a aimless involuntary movement it is the aimless aimless involuntary movement it is the aimless involuntary movement now in korea there is involvement of heart there is involvement of head as well as upper limbs mostly there is involvement of head and upper limbs upper limbs and the head and there is a darting movement of the tongue remember darting darting tongue movement movement and this chorea it can involve the half part of the body it can be hemi or it can be generalized now it can be hemi involving half or it can be generalized it can be generalized now so after the rheumatic fever after rheumatic fever it may take six months it may take six months for the chorea to appear it takes six months for chorea to appear so when it disappears it disappears by six weeks it disappears this appears by six weeks so this chorea it disappears so remember it takes six months it may take six months it disappears by next six weeks and there is a aimless involuntary movement of the head and upper limbs mostly there is a darting movement of the tongue and it may involve the half of the body or it can be generalized so and the next important point this chorea it is more common in female it is more common in female and the next thing you remember and this is also due to the antibody production but the important point here is this patient may present with obsessive compulsive disorder emotional instability instability now obsessive compulsive disorder and emotional instability as well as muscular weakness and tics or psychotic features tics or psychotic features at this point i want to add one mnemonics that is m o t e m o t -E. muscular weakness obsessive compulsive disorder tics or psychotic feature and emotional instability and remember it is a aimless involuntary movement involving the head and the trunk that is the upper limb upper limb and there is a darting tongue movement which may involve half of the body or whole of the body taking six months to appear and it resolved by six weeks now let us discuss for the next one or two minutes about the involvement in the skin and soft cutan soft 
cutaneous. So, what happens in skin? There is erythema. There is erythema marginatum. This erythema marginatum is more common in trunks followed by limbs. There is a pink macule. There is a pink macule with central clearing and serpentinous and serpentinous edge. So, pink macule with central clearing, serpentinous edge, and it is migratory. So, it is migratory. It is migratory and it appears and disappears. It appears and disappears. This is the point you have to remember in skin. But the involvement in skin and the subcutaneous is less than 5%. Less than 5%. It is quite rare. And the next point, next point is subcutaneous nodules. Subcutaneous nodules. So, what is subcutaneous nodules? These are 1 to 2 centimeter nodules, which are painless. They are painless present over bony prominence. They are the 1 to 2 centimeter nodules, the pea sized nodules. They are the painless and present over the bony prominence. They are present over the bony prominence. So, I talked about the involvement of the different organs of the in the rheumatic fever, which is most important. And they have a typical features like involvement in the joint and involvement of the heart. These two are most important. And even in these two, involvement of the heart is important because the involvement of the heart is permanent. The damage that is made to the heart is permanent. It does not resolve completely. And the next involvement is the brain causing the chorea, skin causing the erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodule causing the nodules which are painless and 1 to 2 centimeter nodules which are present over the bony prominence. Now this is the end of the section 3 or part 3 of the rheumatic fever. Mm -hmm.